Hi! In this tutorial, we will create the HUD scene. The HUD scene will have a label that we will use to display the score and we will update this label every time the player scores. Let's get into it. Okay, I'm gonna create a new scene and our HUD is gonna be a canvas layer. And under here, well, first let's rename it to HUD. Here we need a label that we will rename to score. This score label is gonna display what the current score is. So for now, let's say, let's put zero as like a temporary score. Let's change the layout of this to top wide and let's pull it down just a little bit. Now we don't want the text to be on, to be starting from the top left. So let's change the vertical alignment to center and the hor excuse me, alignment to cen center and the vertical alignment to center as well so that it sits in the center peacefully. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is to change the font. We don't wanna use this ugly default font that Godot has. <laughs> so let's create a custom font. You can see that there's a custom font property under the control section here. If you click that, you'll see that we're not currently using a custom font. I'm gonna click on empty and create, create a new dynamic font. And I'm gonna set the size to 48 and the font data to our font that we had inside our assets. That looks better, but let's add some outline to this so that it looks more like the original font that Flappy Bird uses. To do that, let's go to custom colors and check font color shadow. And you can see that already we have some drop shadow going on, but we want this to be an outline instead of a drop shadow. So let's go to custom constants and set the shadow as outline to one. And this is gonna turn the drop shadow in, into an outline. Let's make this a bit thicker, three on the horizontal and three on the vertical. Good, okay, looks better. And now, oops, well, let's save the, the HUD. Might as well under a new folder that we, we're gonna create called UI. And let's also save the font that we just made, the font resource, the dynamic font that we created into a new folder, which I'm gonna create now. And that's gonna be called fonts. Let's right click on the dynamic font resource and click on save. And I'm gonna call this one Flappy Font 48. Great. Now let's add our script. And inside here, let's take a let's get a quick reference to our score label. And let's define a method called update score that we will use to update the score label. Make sure that you transform the new score variable into a string because we're gonna be passing an integer to this. So we can't, you wanna turn it to a string first before we assign it to the text property of the label because it's expecting a string. Great, so we're done here. So let's go back to world and instance our HUD. I'm gonna move it back to the bottom because it's in a canvas layer, it doesn't really matter where it is inside the scene tree. So that's why I'm gonna move it back. Now we have our HUD, we have a way to update the HUD's score variable score label, excuse me, 
and now we need to actually do it and that's why we need to add a script to the world scene and the world scene is gonna hold our game score we'll also add a set get method to this and you'll, you'll see in a second why this is useful let's define it real quick Okay, let's also get a reference to our HUD. And our obstacle spawner. Now that we have our reference to our HUD, let's also update the HUD after we update the score variable that we have here. Great, so the useful thing here is the setGet method, which we called setScore, will be called every time we set score to a, to a value. So every time we set score, the HUD will also be updated so we don't need to call hot.update score every time we change the score. Now let's create a method that we're going to use to update the score when the player actually passes through a pipe and we'll call this player score and we'll set this score, we'll increase it by one. Make sure that you use self.score otherwise the set get method that we defined isn't gonna work. This is only the case when you're calling, when you're trying to set the score inside the same script. If we were to use set the score variable outside the script, the set get method would be called, but inside you need to say self.score. And now the problem is we need to remember the signal that we set inside the obstacle seeing the score signal now we need a way to connect this to the player score method that we just cre created but this method is inside the world script but this signal is inside the obstacle script and we don't have access to the obstacles inside the world scene do you remember what has access to the obstacles yeah, the obstacle spawner. So we need a way to communicate to the world scene that we want to connect the score signal to a method inside world. And that's why we're going to create another signal inside the obstacle spawner called obstacle created. And we'll pass the obstacle to this signal. This will be called after we spawn an obstacle and we set its position. Let's pass in the obstacle. And back in world, and inside the world, as you know, we have access to the obstacle spawner because it's inside the scene. And now, inside the, inside the ready method, when the game starts, we can say that we want to connect this method, this signal that's inside the obstacle spawner to a method that we're going to define inside this script. And let's call it on obstacle created. And this has the obstacle inside. And the only thing we, we want to do inside here is to connect the score signal of this obstacle to, you guessed it, the player score method that we just defined. Let's run this real quick and see if it works. And if we go through Oops, 
Something went wrong. And operands, player score, player score. Oh, I think it's because we didn't set the score to anything. So let's say that it starts off as zero and let's run it again. Now when we go through an obstacle, you can see that our score is being updated. And if you go, if you miss it, we don't get a score. Okay, great. So that works. So let's do a small recap because that felt a bit confusing to me. So inside the obstacle scene, we have a signal called score. And the score is being emitted each time the player exits the score area that's inside the obstacle. This area right here. Every time the player exits this, the score met signal is being emitted. And inside the obstacle spawner, every time we spawn a new obstacle, we have another signal called obstacle created. We're emitting this signal and we're passing the obstacle. So back in the world scene, at the start of our game, we're connecting the obstacle created signal to a method called on obstacle created and inside that method we're connecting the score signal of the obstacle to player score. So this is all work that we did to, to basically connect the score ver signal of the obstacle to this method right here. If you didn't really understand this please don't hesitate to ask a question, I'll be happy to help. Now the final thing I'm gonna do is to create a new game method that we're gonna use to start the game. And inside here I will set the score to zero and I will call the start method of the obstacle spawner. And we'll call this method after we connect the obstacle spawner signal. If you remember, inside the obstacle spawner, we set the timer to auto start. Now we want to uncheck this because we're starting it inside the world, world script. But this isn't going to behave differently because we're starting it right away anyway. But later on, when we create our men menu system, this is going to be useful. So let's run the game and see if this whole thing works properly now. I can go through obstacles and my score is being updated. And if I miss, well, we don't have a game over state yet and we don't have that die method that we defined, that we said we will define inside the player. So that's why we're not actually dying. But as you can see, the HUD works and we can score. Okay, great. Thank you very much for watching this lecture. I hope you learned something useful and I will see you in the next one.